Morning guys, July 28th, Thursday, and I uh, wanted to talk today as a tandem instructor slash tandem examiner about the no drug policy that's being debated uh, with USPA. I'm a huge supporter of a no drug policy for tandem instructors, and I will tell you why. Let's break down an average tandem jump, okay? 20 minute call, we go in, we meet our students, we greet our students, we meet family or friends, whoever might be with them, we ask them, you got everything out of your pockets, do you need to use the restroom? Boom, they go use the restroom, come back, boom. We harness them up, we get everything, everything going. We then brief the student. We brief them on where their arms should be, where their legs should be, where their hips should be, what they can expect in free fall, what they can expect in the plane. We do give them a complete briefing of, of what the skydiving will entail. Five minute call, we go, go do our gear check. We grab a drink if we have time. We put our gear on, make sure everything is good. We now call, we walk our student to the plane, always keeping particular attention to keeping ourselves between the prop and the student, always watching out for the student. And we'll throw in a bad dad joke here and then. We walk to the plane, we get on the plane, watch your head, don't bump your head. We get in the plane, we set the student down, we put a seatbelt on them, we put a seatbelt on us. We take off 1500 feet, we take their seatbelt off, we take our seatbelt off, tell them to have a good time, enjoy the ride. Meanwhile, we're looking out the window, making sure that we know where we are, we're checking our altitude. Because if we have an emergency, we have to bail out how high are we will determine how we how we do that. And yes, I've got one emergency bailout. Five emergency landings, one emergency bailout. So during that 1,500 feet to 6,000 foot ride, we're checking our, our gear. Our leg straps are good, our chest straps are good, our three rings are good, our handles are in the right place, drug, primary, secondary, cutaway, reserve, RSL. Boom, we're good. We might make a couple minor adjustments to the student. Take the slack out of the diagonals if necessary. Check the lower lumbar support if necessary. 6,000 feet, we give them another in-flight briefing. Yes, your goggles are safe. Here they are. We all know that one. So we give them another in-flight briefing of what they can expect in free fall. We start the hookup process. We hook them up. Lower right, lower left, upper left, upper right. We do a complete systems check again. We then check their leg straps. We check their belly band. We check their chest strap. We make sure the, the uppers have been adjusted a little bit and any slack has been removed. We then finish with ourselves. Drogue, primary, secondary, cutaway, reserve, RSL. Boom, we're good to go. 13,000 feet, red light comes on. Put the stu student's goggles on. Make sure they grab a hold of their harness. Green light comes on. Boom, we're getting ready to rock and roll. All the time, we're checking the plane. What's our ground speed? What's our air speed? Uh, how many groups are on the plane? How many students are on the plane? How many AFFs are on the plane? Is there a chance that AFF won't go and we'll have to go around them? Are there any clouds? What's going on? 13,000 feet again, green lights on. We're getting ready to move to the door. We're moving to the door and we've got a student. We want to make sure that, are they nervous? What, what's going on? Everything's going good. Okay, great. We get them in the door, set them up for exit of whatever exit you're going to do. Ready, let's go. Oh, wait. We have to check our drug. We check our drug. We check our secondary before we exit the plane. Then we go. Oh yeah, don't forget that. We exit the plane, we're good. We throw the drug, we, we check the drug. Primary, secondary, cutaway, reserve, RSL. We tap the students, we're good. Where's the videographer? Videographer flies in, boom, we geek the camera. Do a little turn if we want to. Meanwhile, the whole time we're in free fall, we're looking at the drop zone. Are there any, is there anybody underneath me? Did the student pull high? Did the student have a premature opening? Did, did the tandem instructor before me have a premature opening? Okay, are we, are we close enough to the drop zone that I don't have to pull high to make sure the videographer can make it back? Everything's going good, great. 6,000 feet, tap the student back in, we deploy the parachute. Parachute's open. Parachute's good, lines are good, slinks are good, risers are good, all of our handles are in the right place. We proceed to do our housekeeping. Lowers, we disconnect, we extend, we reconnect. Check the student's chest strap, make sure everything's good. We check in with the student, how you feeling? Oh yeah, throw in, throw in another dad joke if necessary. And then we proceed to fly the parachute around, paying particular attention to that changing. The student might be perfectly fine for the first two turns, but if you're with me, <laughs> maybe not. Everybody knows I like to turn. So, but we're paying particular attention to our student. Meanwhile, we're paying particular attention to other jumpers. Where are we in the landing area? Are the winds changing? What's going on? Is there any turbulence? Is there anything that I need to be aware of? Oh, there's a student on level with us. All this stuff is going on, right? We throw in a practice landing. We come in, we land with the student. Assuming we're not hot cycling, we do a, we do a landing. We unhook our student, we high five, we take them inside, fill out their paperwork, their certificate, their logbook, whatever. That's what a tandem instructor has to go through every single time. An average tandem instructor is going to do 8 to 10 tandems a day. My record is 19, but there are many people that do 15 to 19 consistently, regularly. I will never try to do 19 again. But let's just say you had to do that 8 to 10 times a day. Do you really want somebody who's only does drugs occasionally or, you know, rolls in on Sunday morning to do tandems who's been out drinking since, you know, till 4 o'clock in the morning Saturday night? I don't. I don't. 
if you're going to take my son or, or my fiance or, or someday my wife for a skydive, I want the professional. I want the guy who's going to be on his game every single time he does a jump. Every single time. Because keep this in mind, guys. While this is just another day at the office for us, it's their first jump most of the time. Sometimes their second or third. But most of the time, it's their first jump. They're scared. Admit it or not, they're scared. They're nervous. They don't know what to expect. So when they walk in, do they want the guy who looks like he's maybe does drugs occasionally, only smokes pot when it's when it's on his own time? No, no. There's no place in this game for drugs. So if USPA does vote on this and I get a, and I get a voice, I'm absolutely going to support a no drug policy. I just gave you in five minutes a brief rundown of what an average tandem is. Let's assume the exit. I mean, I'm giving you a perfect scenario. What happens if the student goes to shit and gives you a poor exit and it flips over? We've all had it. What happens if you have a malfunction and you have to cut away? What happens if the aircraft has an emergency and you have to bail out? What happens if the student freaks out? What happens if there's a medical emergency on the plane? What happens if somebody on the ground gets hurt and you're needed to assist with that? All these things are going on at a, at a drop zone on any given day. Anything can happen. So when, when somebody says to me, you know, would you support a no drug policy for tandem instructors? You damn right I would. I don't think there's any place in this business for drugs. If you do drugs, go find another career. That's just my opinion. I could be wrong. I'm not, but have a nice day.